campus camera feels it necessary to commend the various candidates who campaigned vigorously for not altering, defacing, or otherwise mutilating our beautiful campus with their most informative signs. Our thanks to you for your ecological awareness. Ralph Nader, crusader for the safety of the American people as consumers from the suppliers of consumer goods, spoke at USU. He is a very dedicated man to the causes he supports and has been responsible for many advances in safety, sanitation, pollution control, and advertising credibility. A year ago, four Kent State students died for their desire to perpetrate a more peaceful nation and world. As a result of their deaths, felt all over a nation that finds itself caught up in the throes of a movement for peace in the world, a moratorium was held at Utah State as well as on other national campuses. This year, the SMC has again planned and sponsored another moratorium, which all students were invited to attend in respect for the four students and in perpetration of a world for peace. A guest speaker has been made available and several films are to be shown, which will enable all those students interested to find out more and become better acquainted with those events of a year ago which are not to be passed over nor forgotten. The guest speaker, a well-informed member of society, will present some pertinent issues and interesting ideas to the individuals who wish to be better informed and aware of what is happening now and what has happened since the Kent State tragedy. The spring weather in the area brings out a club action on campus that is the Old West in its rough, exciting form. The Rodeo Club is this action-packed organization on campus that involves many of its members in individual competition in the arena. Although spring is the season for most action, the club has already competed in three rodeos this school year. The first was in the fall, the second was during Christmas, and the third was three weeks ago in Hiram. The points accumulated at these first three rodeos will count toward total team points and individual scores. As in all competitive sports where there are points involved, there is a reward. And for Utah State Rodeo Club, it is the spot of second in the region, which takes in the areas of Utah and part of Idaho, represented by 12 or 15 schools. There is a variety of events in the rodeos with the traditional bronc and bull riding, calf roping, steer wrestling, barrel racing, goat tying, and a relatively new event, that of girls breakaway roping. Returning members of the team are John Diamond, Vern Bastion, and Lyle Lofthouse. If you are interested in an action-packed afternoon, attend the Utah State University Rodeo May 14th and 15th at the Logan Fairgrounds. sparked off a week of activities during Indian Week. The Lord's Prayer was recited and also performed in sign language. Gerald Wilkinson, executive president of the NIYC, was featured speaker. The National Indian Youth Council was founded in Arizona in 1961. Older people also participate in this organization. It was organized to help the Indian people deal with the blows dealt to them by the white people. It was stated by Gerald Wilkinson that being an Indian was a strength and not a weakness. 
They are working for better communication with Bureau of Indian Affairs. The main complaint against the Bureau is that Indians are allowed to hold only the lowest jobs and decisions are made by non-Indians. Education was also attacked during the discussion. It is felt that today's education systems are a result 90% drop out of high school. It seems to be a matter of survival. Those most able to conform. Following the Civil War, there was only one political The next Indian commissioner was appointed for the Bureau of Indian Affairs should have their own attorneys. Up until the Johnson administration, the responsibility of the federal government to the Indians was through the Bureau of Indian Affairs. The Mormon Church program of bringing Indian children into the homes and educating them is good in the respect that the homes are good, but is the program good in its assimilation of the child's culture into another? The Indian, in relation to their civil rights program, would like to solve them by themselves. None have had the opportunity to set their own goals. The Indian people have been smothered with help to reach goals set for them by their helpers, help which has been too much of the wrong kind of help. These people are coming into their own destiny. Indians' position in this society has been a generalized entity by whites who have required the Indian to become, in theory, what he cannot be in fact. The diversity of the two races was to be the barrier to cultural assimilation. Meaningful symmetry can be found in the shape of the past. The question of Indian ownership of land and the white man's approach to either civilize or eliminate him is apparent in the past history of the races on the American land. The French and Spanish, in contrast to the general mode, invited the Indian to work with them in their colonization. The eventual loss of the buffalo due to the presence of the white man led to the loss of the important aspects of the Indian culture, an example of which is the elimination of the Kiowa Sundance ritual. The Indian began to resist the pressure of the white man, who felt that as a result of having subdued the Indian, he no longer had to destroy him. The relocation programs, which rewards individuals who agree to leave the reservation and take jobs in the city, are attractive in theory, but impractical in use, because they take away the Indian's right to a culture of his own and attempt to further assimilate him into the existing white culture. The group representatives from Alcatraz Island spoke of the education system that exists in the society today and its use to the Indian. They felt that an education was necessary for the survival of the individual, but they did not feel that the white man's education was best for the Indian. The long range plan calls for an advisory board to set up the educational system and a cultural center where crafts and language of Indians could be preserved. 